you guys ever had a moment in your life where you have made plans for something and something comes around that makes you almost want to change your mind up until another detail comes and suddenly that one thing suddenly makes you motivated to continue? What I'm going to be talking about today has a lot to do with that. The end result will be kind of what the main point of the topic is, but we'll get there when we get there. With that being said, hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another video. As a backstory to this, a few years back, um, I was inspired by one of my now exes, who I never talked to, um, to make annual videos reaching out to others letting them know that everything's going to be okay, that no one's alone. And videos of reassurance for lost ones. However, a couple years after that started, this particular individual hurt me. To a degree that actually broke me. Which is very hard to do. Um, and I almost gave up on the idea. Then came a TikTok trend. At the time that this happened, I was doing TikTok videos of my own. These didn't last very long, and they're still up if you're curious enough, but I was more doing kind of a combination of this channel and TikTok at the time. And I would watch my watch all those contents on both simultaneously as well. While watching TikTok, I came across a trend that was a portion of a song called Sincerely Me from the musical Dear Evan Hansen, which for those who don't know is actually based off of a novel um, that was written by four individual people. Um, I actually have a list of them because the names are hard to say and sometimes I have to look at them to actually um, say them. But the individuals are Val, it might be Emic or Emich, I'm not sure which, E-M-M-I-C-H. Um, I'm going to guess Emic because that's how I usually see it pronounced. Apologies if I'm saying it wrong, though. So Val Emic, Ben Pasek, Stephen Levinson, and Justin Paul. Um, but the musical is kind of what stuck out to me at the, that point because when I found the trend, it was a very small portion of the song that was, to me, extremely humorous. I mean, the song Sincerely Me overall is, it's serious, but half of it is humorous because of what goes on during that scene. No spoilers here. If you're curious enough and you haven't seen the uh, musical yet, it's been adapted into a film, and I do recommend it. Um, I love it. Now, when I saw the bit, I actually went off to see what it was from. That's when I found out about the actual song, Sincerely Me. And I listened to the whole thing. Like I said, I loved it. And when I saw it, it was on an album that showcased a Broadway musical. Back in 2017, I think, was when it was last performed by its original cast. Um, and I was curious. I looked online on YouTube to, on this platform to see if I could find um, recordings of the musical itself. I was very lu lucky enough to be able to actually find something. So I watched it. And... <laughs> that, that musical hit me hard. In short, for those of you who haven't seen the musical, it hits on topics of depression um, anxiety and the drastic outcomes that can lead to. I'm not going to, for those who don't want spoilers, don't worry. I don't plan on spoiling anything. But while watching that film, well, sorry, while watching the Broadway, the recording of the Broadway musical itself, um, I was watching Ben Platt and Mike Heist, Feist, I forget, I'm sorry, I forget the last name, 
Um, I think it's Mike Feist, actually. I apologize if that's wrong, though. Um, there was a song being performed way later on in the musical where the main protagonist was coming to terms with who he was. Even though the musical is pretty much he struggles up until near the end during the falling action of the story. Which makes sense, because by the time a climax hits, that's where the peak of the most problematic part hits in a story. Um, of any kind, really, too. Regardless of whether it's a movie, musical, book, game, video game more specific, I guess. Regardless of what it is, the climax is always the part, the peak point. The point where things hit their worst point and start to get resolved. But with that being said, um, after watching that point, I was at the point where I started actually getting convinced that just because of that one person who hurt me to the degree they did, it doesn't mean I should stop helping others and trying to understand how other people feel. Sure this ex did originally inspire me to do the idea or give me the idea of doing it but that's all they did they just gave me an idea the premise behind it wasn't just on them this ex of mine isn't the only person I've met who has struggled in some kind of way or another and that's not even including myself in the past, I have struggled mentally in a way. I don't have clinical depression or anything, but I have gotten depressed in large degrees before. I'm very grateful myself to be able to have people who have helped me through that. And I want to do the same for anybody else who needs it. That was the main purpose of the videos like the one I'm doing today. While watching through the movie, which I actually was watching earlier today because I just bought it uh, recently, while watching through that film, I was reminded of the fact that there are many people out there, maybe some of those people are you, maybe you're one of them, who struggle to a very depressive degree, who have lost someone and maybe you blame yourself for it. Or maybe something else has happened that caused you to feel alone or unwanted. But, and I don't know, maybe some of you who have met me in person think that's me. If that's the case, it was never really intended that way on my end. So if that's the case, I apologize, but... I have a weird impact on people at times. That's why I say that. I go with the flow on things, and sometimes it'll lead to outcomes that I never would have expected to happen. So that's kind of why I added that detail. And either way, maybe it's not the case. Maybe you don't even know me, and there's someone out there who has caused that impact on you. Whether it makes you feel alone, stranded, betrayed, Maybe it was just a feeling. Maybe you have clinical depression and you have that, you get these points where it's like, you can't help it, but you do end up feeling that way anyway. Maybe that's the case. And if so, well, one of the, one of my favorite songs, not my favorite, my favorite is definitely Sincerely Me, but I'm going to quote something from one of the songs from the musical itself. In the song, You Will Be Found, their chorus is a perfect statement for a situation like this. And I'm going to quote it. So for credit's sake, I'm going to list out those who wrote it just to give credibility. I'm not going to sing it. I do know the notes, but I'm not going to sing it. 
uh, the songwriters were actually two of the original authors as well of the book, which is why I brought it up in the first place. It was Benj Pasek and Justin Paul who wrote the words to the song. With that being said, and they probably wrote the music too. And it is a beautiful song. I'm not even going to lie. But with that being said, the line that I want to quote goes, and again, quote, Even when the dark comes crashing through, you need a friend to carry you. When you're broken on the ground, you will be found. So let the sun come cra the streaming in, because you'll reach up and you'll rise again. If you only look around, you will be found. I've said this before on multiple circumstances. Every time I've either rewatched the Broadway musical before the movie, seeing the movie, and even during watching the movie, every time that song was played or sung, There's a reason Dear Evan Hansen, and I haven't said this yet, but Dear Evan Hansen is <laughs> the only musical, Broadway or not, that has gotten me as emotional as it has. The four authors who wrote this, the, the book originally, smart move. And there are a lot of people who also hated on either the Broadway musical or the movie. But the fact of the matter is, I think some of them expected a better outcome than what was provided. Because, and this is a tiny spoiler, so I apologize for this, but in the story, the main protagonist does not get the girl. Which is what a lot of people expect out of movies with some kind of relationship involved. But the point of the film and musical and book was never to get the girl. It was to find oneself, and not just that, but to point out to the audience, whoever reads or watches it, that you're never alone. For heaven's sake. I was curious to see if there was like a scene at the after the credits, which I doubted, after watching the movie, but I stuck around to the end, cre to the end, very end, the very last few seconds of the film, including the credits, and the very last thing that was on there was a reminder: you're never alone. If you know somebody who struggles, who goes through life and has either clinical depression or any kind of depression, suicidal thoughts, or anything of the matter, reach out. Help them. That's... That was the sole purpose of creating these annual, maybe not to the date, but annual videos from the get-go. And... Admittedly, I almost lost sight of that. But after watching Dear Evan Hansen, <laughs> I can't help but at least make an attempt to reach out. I've gone through a lot in my life, and I'm sure... If it's something I haven't gone through, I at least find a way to relate to it. I, I try to make it a point to find ways to understand what others go through. And some people say, those who go through depressive times, say that there's no way others can understand. And to a degree, they're not wrong. But they're not exactly 100% accurate either good example of this, and I'm going to pull from the, um, from the story of Dear Evan Hansen, so again, 
spoiler, um, there's a point where Evan, real name Mike, but he doesn't go by that because, okay, this is only explained in the book, so this is not much of a spoiler, but Michael Evan Hansen is his full name. I bet it's John Evan Hansen. I looked it up once. I think it's Mike. But anyway, I'm just going to go by the original name. I just found that in detail interesting. I digress, so I apologize for that. Evan, he... Evan had been playing a lie throughout most of the film. But it helped him find himself, and by the time he did, realized his faults and everything, was around the peak of the story. It was right before he started realizing who he actually was and accepting himself, which is very hard to do for someone who goes through extreme clinical depression. Prior to that, he admitted the faults that he had made to... Um, a group of individuals who he had impacted it extremely negatively, but very indirectly. He started making actions to correct it, to rectify the mistake. But after revealing his faults, the group of individuals did ask him to leave because of how hurt they were by it, and I makes sense to be human to do that it makes 100% sense but it broke him and even though I personally have never gone through that direct scenario I can understand that feeling and it's painful Feel like you've lost those you've cared about, which I never have lost every single individual I've cared about. My family and I have always been very close, and that's something I'm grateful for. But I'm the kind of person who I try to love and care for as many people as I can. Family's different. I'll always love my family whether it's my genetic parents, my siblings, grandparents, aunt, uncle, yada yada, or if it's someone like my wife or future children, or my mother and father-in-law, or brother-in-law, or the several apparently sister-in-laws that I have. I could, I could go on forever about this, but... Or if it's someone else. Like, even if it's no one family wise like that they they those people always get the most love out of me that I'm never going that's never going to change but even then until shown that they don't deserve it I try to show love towards others as well and When at first that's shown to be deserved, but then that trust is broken, which has happened to me on multiple occasions before, it hurts greatly. Maybe it's just because of the kind of person I am, but it does. And that's something that does make it easier for me to relate to Evan, in a way. I'm not going to say what happened. I am not going to say how it happened. I'm trying to be as vague as possible with a little bit spoilers, but nothing too drastic for those who haven't seen it. I, like I said, I do recommend watching either, if you can find the Broadway on here at all anymore, or watching the film itself. But you'll always have someone who... The point of me saying all this, of that extensive last piece, is that I'm trying to make a point that there will always be someone out there.
there who can relate or who can just be there when it's needed. Maybe it's someone you haven't crossed paths with yet. Maybe, just maybe, it could be an indirect relation. A good example of that kind of aspect of what I mean by that, just so we're kind of understanding what I'm trying to say on the indirectness. Just because someone is lost doesn't mean they're not there. In a way, lost friend or relative, they're still there. If you were close enough to them, they're there through you. My great-grandfather and my mom's grandfather passed away quite a bit of time ago. Somehow, I don't know how, but I do remember bits and pieces of the funeral. I was very young, that's how I don't understand how. But at the time I didn't understand, but I can still remember the emotions that my mom felt. She was sitting next to me mourning. And I don't blame her. Grandparents are very close to their grandchildren. Especially, for, well, for the most part. There are some exceptions, but it's rare. Looking back, I definitely more understand it now than I did then. And I know I met my great-grandfather a couple of times but I never got to know him too well. But now I do have another great-grandfather who died more recently and it was the same response. Him, on the other hand, I spent enough time around him and where I can, I, I know enough about him and it gave off a similar response. Or it was great-grandmother, maybe. Actually, I think it was that. I don't remember. It's... Yeah, it was both, actually. That's why. I digress. I'm jumbled right now. I'm sorry. Regardless, I did know both to a degree enough to understand how they responded to things and how gentle they were. And when it comes to this kind of stuff, just because they're gone physically doesn't exactly overall mean they're gone. My mom's parents, the children of these two, bundle of great-grandparents for me, but grandpa my mom's parents were my grandparents. You could see, like, the... You could see the pieces that were good from my great-grandparents in my grandparents. But no one ever thinks of it that way. Which makes sense, it's not exact, they're not the person themselves. However, they're the product of them. Because of that, some of the lessons that are taught pass down. Not all of them. Some of them you want to learn for yourself and some of them you want to have differences. Which makes sense, that's a human thing to do. But, when it comes to the better aspects, the good aspects that you do share those good aspects are of those lost individuals sure I use grandparents as an example and it makes sense but grandparents aren't the only ones sometimes even parents on their own can be that way and sometimes this one's very rare because it really depends on the group you spend time around friends doesn't mean the morning stops. That's a, that was the core point of this annual video in the first place. Loss is what started it a few years ago, but to me it's more than just that. Loss leads to one thing, grieving eventually to some people lead to depression 
but the thing is you're never alone realistically if I could rewind time and show the footage that I found after the events that hit me um, back when I first found this stuff about Dear Evan Hansen if I could show that to past me before I found it I definitely would and for anybody who goes through a hard time I would definitely recommend it a lot of people hate on it because of how realistic it is some people hate on it just because they expect very specific details that just aren't there and because those very small details aren't there they get upset However, in my personal opinion, it's very relatable, which is actually a fact. But the opinion part is, because of this fact, it is a really good film, really good Broadway, and a really good book. I actually listened to an audiobook version on YouTube at a point, and I love it. Long, sure. Not Lord of the Rings long or the Giver long, but it is long. But even then, the story only pinpointed one thing to me. Something that I think everybody needs to know. And that something is just that no matter what you're going through, no matter who you are, what has happened, there will always, always be someone or something out there to help. Sometimes you have to look. Sometimes you have to do some self-hunting, self-exploration. Self and sometimes it could just be that the, the help could be right in front of your face and it's just not as easily noticed. Some, for some people, therapists might help, but for others, maybe it's time. But there are others where maybe it could be peers, which that's the one that works for me the best, peers. Regardless of how it's approached, one thing stands to always be true about the circumstances, and it is that line that I said earlier. And I will repeat it. I want to learn this very badly, this this song by heart. I don't know it yet, but re-quoting the lyric that I had stated earlier. Even when the darkness comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you, when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. So let the sun come streaming in. Because you'll reach up and you'll rise again. If you only look around, you will be found. Every time I hear that song sung, or I read those lyrics, it hits <laughs> hard. And not just because it's a good song, but it's true. And you don't see it, but that is very true. You are not alone. You never will be. Even if you think you are, you're not. You will.
That is probably the best line that could define it. You are not alone and you will be found. I said before sometimes I wish I had found this musical earlier than I did probably would have helped me through a lot of hard times watching someone else go through trials that are similar enough to where your mindset has hit in my opinion that can be very therapeutic and it has been for me. Anytime something goes wrong, you'll always find a small light. Whether you notice it or not, well, it really depends on you. Another quote Out of the shadow, the morning is. Breaking. And all is new, all is new. It's filling up the empty. Suddenly, I'm going to change this one word. You see that all is new, all is new. There will be always times where something or someone will always try to bring you down, but the fact of the matter is that whenever there's a negative force trying to do some harm, there will be a positive force somewhere to try to heal that. And in today's society, unfortunately, this applies more. The healer goes unnoticed a lot of the time, which is why there's so much depression in the world. But it is there. Sometimes just in different forms than others. But like the song says, you will be found. Don't give up. Sometimes perseverance, if you can find it, can be one of the best things for you. Especially under dire circumstances like this. question in the movie or musical asks, when words fail, what do I do? That's where it becomes difficult for anybody. But that's why that little light is always there. Like I said, sometimes it's hard to find, but it is there. Search hard enough and you will find it. Search hard enough, and you will be found. Anyway, I hope anything I've said here has helped with any any of you that might have needed it. I'm going to head off. I kind of need to watch some things so I can raise my spirits a little bit for uh, the upcoming video in a couple hours. Uh, the gaming video that I'm going to be doing. So, with that said, thank you guys for tuning into this um, video. Once again, I hope it helped. If you guys are going through a rough time, I hope that the words I've said today have helped you out. If not, I'm sure everything will be okay. Just keep pushing and you'll be alright. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked it, thumbs up. If you really like this kind of stuff, well, unfortunately the pushing ones don't happen, or not pushing, the motivational ones, hopefully this is motivational, 
don't happen very often. But the psychological related ones actually do. If not, there's something educational going on or some vlog of some sort. Uh, why not give the channel a chance you might be able to find something you may enjoy, something that might subside your mind if you need some kind of distraction. So why not check out the channel itself? That being said, I'm going to head off. Thanks again one, for all of you who tuned into this video, who have been a part of this channel, whether for a short amount of time or a long amount of time. But, not but. And, hope to catch you guys in another video. Whoop. Well, I'm going to delete it after this. I'll see you guys later.